grace and mercy and his peace be among us. What does success look like to you? Is it winning a championship? Is it getting everything done that's on your list each day? Is it getting a promotion at work? Is it putting everything in order at home? Well, to James and John, success looked like, well, being next to Jesus, sitting at his right <clears throat> and his left. They had this idea of a grand throne in heaven with Jesus in the middle and they in lesser thrones, but on his right and on his left. So they decided to ask Jesus about this. They went up to him one day and said, teacher, you can do anything. Do for us what we are asking you to do. Jesus then said, what is it that you're looking for? And they said, to sit at your right and your left. Jesus said, are you sure you want to do that? Do you know what's going to happen to me? Only a few days earlier, he had told them that he was going to be, well, arrested. He was going to be scourged. He was going to be crucified. Did they think that they could go through that too? just as he was going to? They said, yes, we are. We can. And while Jesus didn't argue with them, he knew that, well, they could quite do what he was going to have to do for us. And said, you know, to, go, to, to be on my right and to be on my left is not for me to decide. That is for someone else. But go and follow me. Jesus says that success is not where you're sitting, nor the rank or position you might hold, but success is following the one who came to this world to suffer and die for all. It's to follow Jesus. Now, most of us don't think of success in quite that way, especially on the weekends when we're used to seeing football games, baseball games, basketball games, hockey, you name it. Success is winning. Success is being on top. But Jesus is just the opposite. The way to glory, the, great, the greatest achievement, is not in winning and holding up a trophy, but it is walking with Jesus hand in hand. It is following him. Jesus didn't get upset with James and John. He just pointed them to what they really were talking about, serving Jesus. But the other disciples, when they heard what James and John did, they were upset. Now, they were not upset because Jesus was going to have to suffer and die. They were just upset about, well, who was going to sit where? In fact, a few weeks earlier, as they were walking on the road, they were trying to decide who was the best disciple, who was following Jesus the most. They argued over that. Jesus said, just simply follow me. Whoever wants to be first needs to be last in the kingdom. Whoever wishes to become um, great among you needs to be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first must be your slave. Being at the top in the kingdom, if you will, is not in a rank or an order or a chair, but it is in serving. Because Jesus says, that's what I came to do. I came to earth not to be exalted, although he was Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But he came to serve, to love others. The word that Jesus uses for serving in the Gospel of Mark is quite unique. It really means reaching out. It doesn't have any kind of reward that goes with it. The reaching out is for reaching out sake. The reaching out is following Jesus. 
Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Jesus came and healed her, and she rose and served. Once again, there's that word, serve. He, she served those who were there. And that's what Jesus asks. He asks us to serve those around us, to recognize those around us who could use our help. It doesn't always have to be some grandiose thing. We don't have to wait for a hurricane for us to, well, donate things. Each and every day, we can do our service by opening the door for someone, just simply helping out, just simply being there, just simply going out of our way for someone else, serving Jesus. That's the key, following his example. Jesus spent his time not with the high people of the, of, the, of, the, of the nation. He didn't do go to the elite, but rather he spent his time with those who would be called the lowest, the tax collectors, the harlots, those who, were, those who had committed crimes. Yes, Jesus reached out to the lowest of the low to, to serve them. And Jesus calls us to do the same, to not to see who we are serving so that they can do something back for us, but to simply serve. And glory and honor was not found in sitting on a throne, but was in following Jesus. Scripture confronts us with the example of Jesus time and time again. And each time it shows us a God who is loving others, not because they've earned it, not because they have a right for it, but because he is a God of love and healing. I can't bring the compassion of Jesus or the challenge of Jesus to you and to others unless I first get to know Jesus. Jesus touches us in our baptism. He gives us new life. In our daily walk of faith, Jesus is reaching out to touch our hearts and minds that we might see what he is calling us to do and be. Yes, Jesus touched. Well, before Peter's mother-in-law went and served them, she had a fever. Jesus touched her physically and brought that healing away and gave her strength. That's what Jesus does for us spiritually. He touches our heart that we can walk in strength, knowing that we have a God who has loved us to the extent that he is willing to serve all of us. The most unworthy is still one who is loved by God. Serving then for the disciple is a way of life. It's not just something we talk about or sing about, it's something that we actually do. Now, I know our lives are busy. We are filled with many demands, whether it be on our job or family, just keeping up our houses and the like. But Jesus is saying to us, look beyond the everyday routine for that simple time when you can just open the door for someone else. Take a moment for prayer because you know of a friend or a family member or a neighbor who is having difficulties and needs help. Yes, serving can be very, very simple. It doesn't need to be grandiose. We don't have to be on the headlines of newspapers or television programs. We simply can be Jesus to someone else like Jesus has been to us, caring for us, reaching out for us, showing us his love. It's my hope today when you hear the words of Jesus calling his disciples to service, that you would take that personally and accept that wonderful opportunity to be a child of God by the way you live, 
by the things you actually do. Not just the things you think you could do, or think about maybe doing, or are considering doing, but actually doing the work of the Lord. Reaching out to our children, to our neighbors, to our families, to our friends, to our fellow members, and in whatever way possible, letting them know that as Jesus has loved you, so he loves you also through the service one to another. Dear Lord, then, we are grateful that you came not to be served, but to serve, and we receive your touch in our lives with joy. For those like Simon's mother-in-law who were ill and unable to serve, yet your touch brought her strength and you have touched our hearts as well with your word and with your death and with your resurrection. And that power gives us the hope, the desire, the willingness to serve one another day by day. Amen. And truly the peace of God that passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in faith through Christ Jesus our Lord.